I already mentioned CMG Mo before, he's the artist on the game Tower 57. Well, he was also one of the artists, there's many others as well, on the game The Mummy the Master, which is uh, made after the movie The Mummy. A powerful ancient evil has arisen and the war to save humanity has begun. As an elite agent in the monster hunting prodigium organization, you must use a variety of weapons, upgrades and mysterious artifacts to defend mankind against the supernatural hordes of Princess Ehmenev. The Mummy D Master is available for Windows only at $20. From movies we go to TV shows. Did you start watching Stranger Things 2? Nine new parts came out and what I wanted to talk about here is how about a free video game about Stranger Things? It's not like they needed to hype up the show even more but Netflix released a mobile game for iOS and Android just kind of like an RPG where you click on the screen and all these mobile touch controls and walk around Hawkins and anyway, it's a free game it has five stars all across iOS and Android Google Play Store so definitely check it out if you're a fan of Stranger Things one more cool thing I want to talk about with Stranger Things is that after you finish binging on the nine hours of season two there's also a little show extra interviews with the producers of the show and the cast called Beyond Stranger Things and one of the fans of the series made this cool little Apple II ASCII intro graphics when the trailer for the season came out and Netflix loved it so much that they hired him to do actual official fan art as they enter into this Beyond the Stranger Things mini-series at the end. The artist on this project was Pinot, also known as Pinotsky, and I convinced him to come back to Tumblr because he hasn't posted in the last two years and he said he might uh, do it and it's all cool. We want to see more of this kind of cool little art that he did for the series. Yeah. Let's stay with games that give me this creepy vibe, but positive, like in Stranger Things. In the Shadows is a puzzle platformer where lights scare away shadows, creatures that transform into everyday objects you can use to your own advantage. Confront your fears, solve puzzles, find secrets. So it has a really cool lighting graphics engine which it uses in good ways for its gameplay and it has this personal story kind of because it's developed by a solo developer and as often I praise this because it kind of gives that more personal feel to the whole thing and that's also the case with this game Nicholas Temesi also known as his studio name Color Space Studio made this game and it was also funded on Kickstarter in 2016 so you know it's nice to again talk about video games that were crowdfunded and are actually getting released. So In The Shadows has positive reviews so far and is available for Windows, Mac and Linux at $16. We're gonna stay in the dark just a little bit longer. Arcade Moonlander is a small little game, it only costs $3, available only just for Windows, but it has that familiar vibe of driving a spacecraft around, landing on stuff that we are so fond from various Moonlander games that we grew up with. Actually, honestly, I haven't played a lot of them in very, very long time, so this is a very refreshing thing to get. And it doesn't cost that much at all, so give it a look. Okay, so this next game, I cannot really talk about it. I just need to let itself do the talking, so just play some of the trailer. So, uh, what's with the box? The truth is, I've cloned your mum. What? Get a job, Steggy. Well, well, well. If it isn't Bridesmaid of the Year. What did I do? Oh, you know exactly what you did. I got you totally drunk. I, but I'm not fussed about that. You can do that whenever you like. So as you can see, if British humor is a thing for you, everyone says that they're laughing all the time while playing this game, which you probably already figured out from what you just saw, if this is a game for you or not. It came out for Windows, Linux and Mac and is available for $5. Not now, Steggy. I'm watching Yorkshire's fattest dogs. This next game I've been actually playing quite some time uh, this last month it's called the regions of ruin and the developer sent me a key that's why i was able to uh, quickly just test it out point to others if you want me to review or talk about your video games you can send me a key just like these lovely guys did and it's actually super fun it's kind of like dwarf fortress meets kingdom and if you know me you know that kingdom was one of my favorite games where you just walk left and right and build stuff 
Except in this one, you also get to control your main character. You go out and raid and attack and build your little dwarf settlement. It's not as complex or nothing like as complex as Dwarf Fortress. But it has this nice little core loop of exploring the countryside. And yeah, it gets sucked in. There's a lot of these upgrades, uh, building the town and growing bigger. And the game is, it has very positive reviews here on Steam. And it's only in early access, so this is just the start of it. It's available for all platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, at $17. I'm excited to see how this game is going to get better and better over the time. There's weekly patches coming out and yeah, Bridges of Ruin. By the way, just a quick news item about Kingdom. We are getting the Sixth Island expansion sometimes later on in the future. Just wanted to say that. From a game in early access to a game that's been out for over a year. It's the fan favorite Stardew Valley and it just came out on Switch. So if you finally want to make a farm and lose a lot of hours watering plants and exploring the cute little storyline with cute little graphics, Stardew Valley is available for your convertible console TV mobile device thingy. You probably know what I'm talking about more than I do because I don't have a Switch, unfortunately. Let me know if Stardew Valley is as great as it was when I played it on PC. And of course, if you haven't tried Stardew Valley, just, just get it. It's on all the platforms now, everywhere. I really like that it finally came out on a Nintendo platform because it's big influence was Harvest Moon and uh, Harvest Moon started on Nintendo and now it's like full circle coming back to there. I have two more games for you that you can also play but they're not out yet, however their demos are out. A very well known game in the indie scene called Nikra, or is it Nikra, I actually never know, has finally got a demo out. It's one of the most gorgeous games and the demo is pretty short and sweet and so I'm not gonna even show you too much, just go and play it. Just Take, sit down and finish it, have a good time. That's all I'm gonna say about it. One game I will talk about for a little bit longer, however, is Cynical 7. Boy, is this game super funny. It's kind of super funny, but also a little bit dark because it's a game about a game developer and it's socially awkward and tries to talk to girls with various success. goes to a party, doesn't have a really that good time and we've all been there, we've all been at those parties when we didn't know what to do with ourselves. However, Cynical 7 really delivers humor on top of this. I don't remember when was the last time, just the title screen already had me laughing nuts. The art style is kind of like Undertale, you know, it's not really focused on flashy effects, instead it's kind of more like Cartoon Network bare minimum but still looking really pleasant and just focuses on the story. There is some combat mechanics that I don't really particularly care about but the combat isn't annoying either. It's you know it's just kind of a filler in between. It has that kind of uh, Scott Pilgrim vibe to it but really the brown jewel cherry pie top whatever is the dialogue and this kind of experiences that the character goes through and you really feel you really connect with the character which is what everyone is saying that tries it out. It's currently on Kickstarter with a very low goal of $6,000 and the thing is I'm putting it into the new release section because with the Kickstarter you also get to play the demo and I know that once you try it out you're gonna be excited about it so go on the little description link below click to download the demo it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. You can't really save so you just gotta complete it in one sitting so get yourself like half an hour to have some fun with it. It starts super funny and then in the second half it has this more of a darker moments that we you will all relate with and uh, you know I did because uh, I was when you see the guy getting drunk there and uh, puking outside let's uh, not talk about this anymore. Cynical 7 The Misadventures of Trees go check it out. Dun -dun -dun -dun, final thing of new releases as always Game of the Month and this time it's Let Them Come.
That took me a little bit. Letting Calm came out at the start of October and has really very positive reviews because the game is just smashing great. It's this kind of arcade shooter, sit on the left with your machine gun, enemies coming in from the right and just shoot them up. Like if this was a game that needed quarters to play, I would definitely throw in a lot of them. However, this is the PCH and you can play it on Windows and Mac for five dollars. It's like, how many quarters is that? Like 20? For 20 quarters, you can just enjoy wave after wave after wave. And the thing about a game is the waves inevitably destroy you. But dying is the fun part of the game because that's when you get more and more cash and then buy upgrades which make you easier to defeat the wave next time. And the cycle repeats it. And you just keep on playing through these corridors and super hardcore badass by dude destroy aliens. Shit. Again, $5. Game of the month, let them come. Did you let them come? All right, next up, music feature. Doo -doo 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 -doo. 